Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Is that... I mean, it's not just a Karen, that's a seriously negative IQ. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Your bike has to be parked correctly in the garage. Until recently, I used to work part-time for a delivery company that uses half-pedal power, half-battery-powered six-wheeled bikes that work like little semi-trucks. So after every shift, we have to park the bikes in the garage. Technically, there are designated spots in the garage for each individual bike, but since people don't finish their shifts and come back in the exact time sequence that the bikes have to be parked in, in practice, nobody actually parks the bikes in their correct spot. The first person back just parks at the back, even if their bike is supposed to be parked further up front, and the next person to return parks in front of the first parked bike and so on. The shift managers know about it and are cool with it. They work in the garage so they understand. But new Karen from corporate who just joined a couple days ago did not. She came in suddenly at the end of the day to check things out and found that my bike was parked at the very front. I'd finished last that day because I had a super long shift, but Karen called me immediately and chewed me out on the phone and essentially told me in no pleasant terms the title of the post. I called my shift manager right after and informed him. He said something like, well, technically she's right, so we can't oppose her directly. I suggest you just ignore her. I doubt she'll be back to check. Well, my petty butt did not want to let Karen have this win over me, so I did exactly what she told me to do. I waited a couple more days until I got another mega shift. I arrived early to claim the bike that was technically designated to be parked at the very back. You can already see where this is going. After finishing my route, I specifically drove back slowly to make sure I would be the last one back. Once back, I took out every single bike in the garage by myself. Then I parked my bike and took my sweet time making sure it was parked perfectly centrally in between the lines as well, not just lengthwise. You can see how that would take a long time since the bikes work like semi-trucks in movement mechanism, so it took me damn near 10 minutes to take care of one bike. I had only 59 more to go. I meticulously parked every single bike at their correct spots until the dead of the night that day. My shift manager caught on to my plan soon and chose to turn a blind eye since I was technically following orders from higher-ups. I booked six hours of overtime that day before I clocked out and was scheduled for a whole lot of payment. Next morning, accounts suddenly call me to ask if I'd forgotten to clock out and come back later to do it because it showed that I clocked out six hours later than everyone else. I told them exactly what happened and suggested that they watch the security camera feed inside the garage to make sure that I was actually working the entire time. They eventually folded and told me not to do it again I politely declined and said that I will do the same thing again next day because those were my orders. They said our managerial team will contact you with updated instructions soon. Follow those instructions. I said okay. I received a Slack message from Karen later that day before starting my shift saying I should follow my shift manager's directions to park my bike from now. So I did the exact same thing again that day because shift manager did say that technically the bikes were supposed to be parked in their designated spots. Had the same conversation next morning with the counts and received another Slack message from Karen saying I should park my bike according to what made sense realistically. I'm still gloating over my W over corporate Karen to this day. And our second story. Corporate knows what customers like. I work in food service catering to a large cafeteria. One of my responsibilities is to replace the giant boxes of soda concentrate, which are hooked up to the dispensers in another room. Whenever the Boca Bola or Mesa moisture runs low, I have to hook up a new box of the stuff so the customers can have their delicious empty calories. I've done this for long enough to know exactly which concentrates run out the fastest. Our chief offender is Made Aid Lemonade, one of the very few non-carbonated beverages that gets mixed with water at a much higher concentration than other drinks, resulting in this sugary mess that could give hummingbirds diabetes. It's noteworthy that we actually had two kinds of drink dispensers, one kept in a large inline row that you've probably seen in every fast food place ever, and several standalone dispensers for our more specialty drinks. 
About a year back, manager decided to swap out one of our drink mixes that was going out of stock, whipped and spleen tea, for a new product, which meant we had to take down and rebrand one of our standalone dispensers for this new zero-calorie health drink, Yobi Tasty Berry Health Water. That was fine and all, but trouble was on the horizon. See, the drink was a hit, as it was almost unique among all the available drinks in that it didn't contain 700 calories in a glass, and thus there were a significant fraction of our customers who enjoyed taking shots of the nearly flavorless health water, which got the attention of corporate. See, corporate was always looking for ways to cut costs. It's what corporate does. So they decided, in their infinite wisdom, to swap out one of our heavy-duty inline dispenser slots for this new crazed Tasty Berry health water. This despite the fact that we already had a perfectly functional standalone dispenser and that we would need to swap out one of our high-volume products for this health water crap. But the problems didn't end there. We had very few inline dispensers that would mix their concentrate with water as opposed to carbonated soda, and carbonated soda is bitter, so if you replace one of the soda boxes with health water concentrate, what you get is a bubbly cup of butt-tasting disappointment with a faint hint of whatever the hell Tasty Berry is supposed to be. So manager thought about it long and hard and decided that the only thing to do was to swap out our Maid Aid Lemonade with Yobi Tasty Berry Health Water. I believe this to be a monumental mistake. I repeatedly told manager this, but he wouldn't have it. It was a command from corporate, and corporate knows what customers like. Corporate must be obeyed. So swap the damn lemonade out for the Tasty Berry Health Water, and damn my objections. So I did, and I watched the chaos unfold. The first step, of course, was flushing the line of lemonade to make room for the health water. This involved hours of me being paid to make circuits between the dining hall and the concentrate storage room, slowly siphoning out every bit of lemonade, and those lines are not designed to change on a dime. The only reason they stop dispensing product when the bags run out is because the suction can't pull the product out of the rigid tubes we use to transport the product from the concentrate room to the dispenser. There are gallons of that crap hiding in the tubing. It takes a lot of time to flush it all out, and once the lines were replaced, I then had to flush out all of the air, which would have sprayed our customers with a vaguely sugary shotgun of fluids being squirted out of the dispenser like a malfunctioning sprinkler. All of which I was getting paid for, thank you very much. Next up was the truly delightful detail of mix ratios. See, our little standalone dispensers had adjustable levels for the amount of concentrate as opposed to water, and the Tasty Berry Health Water stuff was a ratio of about 95% water to 5% concentrate, but the lemonade dispenser was an inline dispenser with a set ratio, which was more like 70% water to 30% concentrate, which was to reiterate the highest ratio of concentrate to water out of every dispenser we had. So all the health water stuff was coming out in this over-flavored stream that was not actually all that bad, in my opinion. But to anyone who disliked the taste of artificial sweetener, it was overpowering. And finally, there was the crippling problem of stock. See, corporate, in their infinite wisdom, figured that despite putting the health water on the inline dispensers, we probably wouldn't need all that much more of the stuff, so they kept delivering it to us in the same quantities we'd been getting before. Every week, we'd get a three-gallon box of concentrate to replace what had been chewed through. But here's the clincher. Our Made Aid Lemonade Concentrate comes in two boxes of five gallons each on an inline dispenser with six times the concentration of the standalone dispenser. Oh, and we didn't have the money to rebrand the standalone dispenser, so it was taken down, which meant that every week we'd be completely out of Tasty Berry Life Water within a day of restocking, but we'd also get two more giant boxes of lemonade concentrate that we had to put in storage but couldn't actually use. It was glorious watching customer after customer lodge complaints with management that A, we didn't have their favorite drink, B, the new drink tasted funny, and C, there was never any of the damn new drink in stock. This went on for two months until we had such a collection of lemonade concentrate that we literally didn't have anywhere else to store it. Oh, and apparently corporate had been running dry on the Tasty Berry Health Water stuff too because we stopped getting it in our weekly shipments about a month in. To say it was a complete farce does not do it justice. We were getting daily commentary about the stupidity of our selection. I finally asked manager if we should switch back to just serving our damn lemonade. He reluctantly said yes, but we also didn't have time to flush the lines, so I was instructed to just place the lemonade concentrate in there and let the lines self-flush. 
Four weeks, we served this weird hybrid of lemonade and tasty berry health water stuff until it was completely flushed out of the lines. I personally thought it was delicious. And our last story. It's against HOA rules. You cannot have a front yard garden. About 10 years ago, me and my wife moved to the suburbs to raise our kids. One of the things we noticed was that our neighborhood had a community pool. However, you had to be a member of the HOA to use said pool. Once we moved in, I contacted them to join and was told they are not accepting new members. I was surprised to say the least as I was offering these people free money, but whatever. Now fast forward three to four years. Me and wife had both completely forgotten this interaction. My wife had taken gardening as a hobby and was getting quite good at it, but our backyard is extremely shady. After many attempts, we decided to put in a raised bed garden in the front yard. We did our research and it was not illegal to do so in our city, so I built her one. It came out great. Our front yard looked like something from a magazine, all due to her hard work, not my skill, with many people making a point to walk by and see it. The neighborhood kids love snatching berries as they played nearby. Perfect, right? That's when the call started. The city inspector would be by our yard weekly because someone kept reporting our garden. Every time he'd come by, we'd ask if we needed to take it down or if it was illegal, and he always said no. After a while, we got tired of this game and a little pissed off they wouldn't come talk to us in person, so we filed a Freedom of Information Act request to get the name of whoever was behind this and confront them. Once the request was submitted, we never heard back from the city. The anonymous calls reporting our garden also stopped. This would have been the end of it, but our anonymous friends simply couldn't leave well enough alone, and a couple weeks later I received a call from what sounded like an older woman. Caller, hello, I'm sorry to tell you that you're going to have to remove your front yard garden. Me. Who is this? Caller, that doesn't matter. You need to remove it right away. Me. If you actually want anything to happen, it absolutely does matter. It's not against city law or regulations, and we're not taking it out unless you can provide a lot more information. Caller, it's against HOA rules. You cannot have a front garden in this area per the HOA. At this point, I realized these are the same people that rejected my offer to pay them free dollars to join their stupid club, and happily I explained this to her while grinning ear to ear. I could almost hear the color draining out of her face when she realized who I was. Needless to say, the garden is bigger today than it ever has been, and we even threw a couple kid playhouses up there, because why not? And this, kids, is why HOAs are dumb. And they're usually run by people so power horny that they forget what they're there for in the beginning. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.